Yeah. Right, what you see on the top, the, the top heating lamps, they are heating up the print bed to a certain temperature, which is just below melting point. Um, in the first step, then you you will have a roller spreading powder on a bed. Uh, we'll move to the back and then we'll have the carriage with print heads inside and two fusing lamps on the left and on the right yep. moving from first from right to left and when it moves from right to left it will in it will uh, print uh, two different engines on the surface of that the one agent is a fusing agent the other agent and these are here right uh, they, these agents are here. One is the fusing agent, the other one is the detailing agent. I see. The, uh, the fusing agent is meant to fuse the powder, and the other detailing agent is meant to stop the fusing process. Um, so, this is happening when it moves from right to left. When yep. it comes back, uh, we apply energy with uh, infrared light on the surface, and uh, the fusing agent will then absorb all the energy from that infrared light and make the powder fuse. Uh, the detailing agent, in uh, contrast, well, is printed on the edges of the of the part and um, acts then as a heat barrier. Mm -hmm. So we avoid any fusing of powder from the outside to the part for better surface finish. Exactly. Nice. And w what is the uh, like surface thickness? on every um, layer? The layer thickness is uh, 80 microns. 80 so yeah. 0 .8 That's the millimeters. minimum. The minimum is 0 0.7, but oh. the machine currently is uh, is fixed to 0 0.8. I see. Uh, in the future, we will we will add different variable uh, uh, layer thicknesses. Could you please also tell us what is the raw material and uh, what, how big is the print chamber? The print chamber is uh, 406 on 305 and 406 millimeters. Um, the material that we are using is PA12 powder. Uh, in the next year we will introduce different materials but for the moment we have PA12. I see. And I see that uh, there is uh, another Thing here and one machine for post processing. Can we also yes. go over those? Yeah. So here you see the yep. built uh, the built unit, which is uh, the actual built chamber, uh -huh, and uh -huh. has is has the powder inside. So on the bottom you see there is the powder in it. You in front thing, the powder is brought up on the sides here in this tray and then is spread with the roller that we saw on the machine see, over see, the bed. See, 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 okay. Then. Uh, layer by layer, the parts will sink down mm -hmm. uh, into into this thing, and once we're ready, we can remove this from the machine and, and bring it to the post processing yeah. station. Yeah, and and what is the uh, like? Um, how much of the raw material can be recycled? Um, in here, we uh, we can recycle the material by first removing all the all the powder around the parts yes. that goes into the machine, and then. Um, and then once that is ready, we uh, we connect another hose, and this machine will then mix the powder uh, in a refresh rate of 20, 80, so 20 new powder, 80 percent of uh, used powder yeah. into back into that uh, build unit. And 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 uh, how automated is that? Someone needs to run it, right? Someone needs to someone needs to run it. Someone needs to uh, connect the hoses, yeah. make it run, then remove the parts manually. That is manual work. And and then for loading, connect the hose for loading. So, oh, I see. so there's some manual interaction that need to be happen. And then of course, uh, once uh, once the fresh powder boxes that you see on the uh -huh, down, uh -huh. down there are empty, the the the, the, the operator the user needs to connect new ones to replace that. And do we know what is the cost of this raw material? Um, yes, however, we we uh, only disclose that information oh, with, uh, with the uh, prospects. Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, and we, we currently have only the black material, not color. Uh, yes, uh, currently the parts that we're printing uh, with our printer is uh, black. Okay. And uh, do we have parts that we can see? The parts are there. Yeah, yeah we have parts we over there. Out. Okay. <laughs> okay. So here you see, uh, you see uh, parts. One, one here is the is a medical application. Uh -huh. Yeah, we have here a 
we have here like a dental application a kind of mold for uh, later on doing something else with yeah. that i think put in well, i don't know <laughs> so i don't really know what you would know do with that uh this here is uh this here is um something that uh children with some defect when they mm -hmm. when they were born mm -hmm. uh, can will will get for the first days of their life i think on on, on their head to uh to uh, shape and uh, deform uh, um, this ring i don't exactly know what uh, mm -hmm. what is that for here you can see that some of our parts uh, in our own printers uh -huh, uh -huh, from uh -huh. the well the, the large format printer that, that we are using we've printed ourselves here is this is from a spindle <laughs> this here is a bracket that was the uh, first uh, this year was the original one I see. then uh, then we said okay we can do from that. metal to plastics to nylon right yes yes this is metal then we then we created this part which already optimized. has a little bit optimized it already a little bit in the design uh -huh. and we printed it then we optimized it even more um, by removing by removing more material mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. here we have we're using 20 percent less material I than see than uh, in the original part and uh, and, and it's good enough to cheaper. replace a metal part in the machine well in in that case in that case mm -hmm. yes we we uh, reach with uh, with this the the mechanical properties that we in that place that we need i see uh, but we were producing it in metal before because we uh, yeah that was the way to do it great